Adequate notice of this November the 20th, 2017 meeting has been provided in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act by posting written notice and agenda of this meeting on the bulletin board in the Municipal Building, 1000 Route 10, Township of Hanover, and by hand delivering, mailing, or faxing such notice and agenda to the following newspapers, Morris County's Daily Record, the Star Ledger, Hanover Eagle, and by filing same with a township clerk. May I have a roll call, please? Committee Man Gallagher. Here. Committee Man Fermosco. Here. Committee Man Bruno. Here. Committee Man Capola. Yeah. And Mayor Francioli. Here. Five members in attendance, sir. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, would you all please rise with me for a prayer and a salute. Okay. We begin with Almighty God, we ask that you bless this governing body with an abundance of wisdom and understanding so that every deliberation will result in actions which will promote the common good and the general welfare for all the people of Hanover Township. And we say this in your name, amen. amen. Uh, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all very much. Please be seated. Okay, we have a very nice presentation this evening to all these young gentlemen that have joined us. Recognition of the grades five and six football team members in winning the 2017 Morris County's Youth Football League Conference Pee Wee Championship and recognition of all the cheerleading squad in support of the Pee Wees. Okay, guys, we have with us one of our committeemen whom you know very well, and that's Mr. Bruno, Bob Bruno, who's our Director of Recreation as well. And he's got, uh, along with the Township Committee, uh, our, uh, our congratulations for you and a whole series of certificates and these wonderful looking uh, awards that are sitting in front of me. What are they, flames, Bob? What do you got there? We've got some trophies. Okay. Yeah, trophies for the boys and certificates for everyone. We, um, we're big spenders here in town. I um, know your <coughs> parents will appreciate the fact we we're keeping taxes no corners. down. We cut so. no corners. But we do want to recognize everyone. Yeah. Um, Bob? Yeah, a few things. Um, first of all, this is the fun part of the job, recognizing the achievements of the youth of Hanover. Exciting stuff to have the football team here. Uh, first question. Most importantly, did everybody finish their homework? Yeah. <laughs> I heard a few no's back there, so we'll try to make this quick. Um, but no, this is, uh, this is a great evening, and um, there's some tremendous accomplishments by this group that we want to mention. Uh, the fifth and sixth graders have won 39 games in a row. Who would, uh, who would think 39 in a row? Um, incredible. 34 by shutout, meaning they didn't give up any points. Um, and this year, 9-0, and they only gave up two touchdowns, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and because of that, and really the main reason, one of the main reasons we're here tonight is to recognize the fact that they've been invited to play in a new football tournament that kind of mirrors the Little League baseball tournament that many of you might see on uh, ESPN, the Little League World Series. Football, trying to rebuild their brand a little bit, get the kids a little bit more recognition. Um, so this is a national tournament, um, and these, these young men have been invited to play, really to represent what could be a national champion. Uh, the game will be played out in Canton, Ohio. At the, it's going to be called the Game for Life National Championship at a $700 million Pro Football Hall of Fame facility that's just been built, um, which is known as the most inspirational place on earth. I think that might be a little bit of a stretch. Uh, but the NFL marketing people doing their job uh, have branded this new facility. And they want, they want to rebuild the image a little bit, right? So football's taken a little, bit of a, a little bit of a hit over the last few years. And they're trying to get the kids involved and really do something good. So it is a great game and certainly fantastic to see the kids of Hanover Township recognized. Now, there were a lot of teams that won a lot of games that could have been invited, right? So why did you guys get picked? Uh, the ten the uh, criteria that was used, some of the criteria was tenacity, team character, values, teamwork, respect for the game, uh, respect for their coaches, and respect for each other. So there were a lot of other teams that had good records, maybe not as good as you guys, uh, but they didn't get invited to play in this tournament. Now this will start at the regional level on December 1st up in Sparta at Pope John High School. We don't know what time yet. 
Talk to your head coach, Mr. LaRocca. He expects to know uh, what time that's going to happen pretty soon. And we're going to meet at the rec center on December 1st and give you guys a big send-off. Um, when you get up to Sparta and Pope John High School, you'll be playing at the regional level. And then the champion from that group will go out and play out in Ohio. And I understand the coaches have already booked the hotel rooms um, in anticipation for you guys going out there. So we're expecting big things. And certainly gonna, we're going to wish you all the best of luck. Um, so we've got some certificates and a few more things to do. A couple sayings. For you guys, from some famous football coaches, a little inspiration from me. Uh, winning is a habit. Unfortunately, so is losing. Um, one great football coach said that, Vince Lombardi. You guys have made a habit of winning, and we want to see it continue. You're not going to win every game throughout your entire careers, but certainly learning to win and do the things that it takes to win, um, that becomes a habit, and doing those things over and over again is fantastic. Um, you are what your record says you are. Anybody know who said that? Famous New Jersey-born football coach? Parcells. Bill Parcells. <laughs> so 39-0, and 0, that says a lot about you guys. You guys are winners. You are what your record says you are. So having said that, enough from me uh, temporarily. We're going to invite two of, the, um, two of the players just to come up front and give me, give me a hand. Um, Patrick Mulligan and Anthony Morales. So while you guys are getting up, just one other quick story. When I was um, coaching my daughter's soccer team a few weeks ago, and I was walking off the field, and Patrick's older sister's on the team, and Patrick was there with his Tigers jersey on, and I said to one of the other parents or one of the other coaches, I said, see, see, see that guy over there with that shirt? They, they've won every game for the last three years. They're really good. And Patrick didn't say a word. He just went like this. <laughs> Four years, right, Patrick? <laughs> Four years undefeated. Impressive stuff. So, Patrick and Anthony, come on up front. Just for a second. Very important, guys. We just wanted to ask you, what was the most fun about being on this team so far? We don't want to put you on the spot. What's, what's been the most fun? Now she's 
a cheer, cheerleader mom, but I think she's also the head coach, right? Tori Stigliano? Nicole Lingos? Right, we'll keep moving here. And <coughs> Maria Leach. Okay, the cheerleaders themselves. We need to play three games in three nights. Nina Saliani. <laughs> Lily Pokora.
Kevin Crowley. Way to keep those of y'all. And last but uh, certainly not least, I think the guy who's pulled this all together for probably five or six years, I know they've done some spring training and gotten the kids together over the summer and really put, uh, put a lot of effort into not just organizing the team, but the practices, making sure the kids are having fun and um, certainly working hard as it is a tough game, but uh, I think probably putting in a lot more time than, you know, than most people do and the results are there to show for it. So, you know, bringing the town together, doing a tremendous job with youth football, certainly with the cheerleaders. Um, special thanks and compliments to Mr. Vinny LaRocca. Certainly not least, we want to recognize the players. We've gone above and beyond, not just a certificate for the players, but a little trophy with your name on it as well. So hopefully you'll keep this someplace next to your championship trophy that you're going to win in a couple of weeks. Right? <laughs> we'll start over here. Colin Aker. <laughs> Alex Berecki. Jacob Berecki. Caden Burkar. Justin Calafiori. Jake Zeppelo. Alex C. Mello. Actually played high school football with his father. He's the one who doesn't show him. <laughs> Lucas Diodazio. James D'Amato. Andrew Dehan. Jonathan Earhart. Luke Ench. Michael Trapani. Amy Gallagher. Kevin Graham.
Okay, listen, thanks again, parents, for coming in tonight. We really appreciate it on a week night. Have a good time. We'll get the game time posted. It's again December 1st up at Pope John High School on a Friday. Hopefully, get in the evening, give everybody an opportunity to go up there and watch the game and cheer the kids on. Um, but if that's not feasible, we want to have a send-off from the rec center maybe two hours ahead of time, two hours before the game, and meet them there and really wish them some luck and let them hit the road. So, again, guys who make the town really proud, win or lose, although we certainly hope you win. Uh, but we want to wish you the best of luck in really representing Hanover the way you have. Thanks again for coming in, everybody. <laughs> Bring the cheerleaders up here too. Patrick, how are you?
All right, gentlemen. <clears throat> we'll continue. He's going to be right back. Door. 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 Yeah, really. Oh, back. Oh, you got to go. Oh, you need to go. Okay. We'll just turn it I will pause a minute. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, folks, we'll just pause a minute, wait for one of our council, like one of our committee men to rejoin us. Okay. Where do you go? Back. It's back. Oh. Okay. All set? All right, we're going to resume. All right, gentlemen, at this time, customary for me to ask for a motion to open to the public. So moved. Second. Open. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the floor is open. If anyone would like to address the Township Committee at this time, they can do so from the podium. Uh, giving us your name and address for the record. We will open the floor uh, once again toward the end of the meeting. Uh, after we go through the agenda, if there's something on the agenda you'd like to address, you can do so at that time. Motion to close. Second. Motion to close. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Mr. Administrator. Okay, we have the approval of the Township Committee minutes, the regular minutes of November 10th, 2017. May we have a motion so for approval? Second. Motion, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So approved. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one ordinance for consideration of public hearing and adoption. It's docketed as Ordinance Number 23-2017. It's an ordinance of the Township Committee authorizing the purchase and installation of new lettering for the facades of the municipal building and police headquarters, the exterior and interior municipal building directional signage, and a new freestanding LED digital message board, and further appropriating the sum of $150,000 from the Capital Improvement Fund of 2017 in all prior years for the financing of the improvements set forth in the ordinance. We have the proof of publication that the ordinance and the notice of introduction appeared in full in the November 1st issue of the Daily Record in accordance with law. At this time, may we have a motion to convene the public hearing. So moved. I have a motion by Mr. Second. Karamaska, seconded by Mr. Gallagher. And roll call for public hearing. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Faramoska. Aye. <clears throat> Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Is there anyone in chambers wishing to be heard concerning ordinance number 23-2017? <clears throat> motion to close. Seeing none, hearing none, we have a motion by Mr. Bruno Second. to close the public hearing. Seconded by Mr. Faramoska on roll call to close the public hearing. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Faramoska. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now on adoption, be it resolved in an ordinance of the Township Committee of the Township of Hanover, authorizing the purchase and installation of new lettering for the facades of the municipal building and police headquarters, the exterior and interior municipal building directional signage, and a new freestanding LED digital message board, and further appropriating the sum of $150,000 from the Capital Improvement Fund of 2017 in all prior years for the financing of the improvements be passed on adoption and a notice of the final passage of the ordinance be published in the November 27th issue of the Morris County Daily Record. So at this time, may we have a motion on mm -hmm. adoption. So moved. Second. So moved by Mr. <clears throat> uh, Faramaska, seconded by Mr. Bruno. On roll call for adoption, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Faramaska. Aye. Mr. Bruno? Aye. Mr. Capola? Aye. And Mr. Francioli? Aye. So adopted. And ladies and gentlemen, as we continue with our agenda this evening, we do have three ordinances for introduction. And they are docketed as ordinance number 27-2017. 28-2017 and 29-2017. Ordinance 27-2017 is an ordinance of the Township Committee authorizing the furnishing and installation of two pedestrian gates and other related improvements by the Morristown and Erie Railway for the pedestrian at-grade rail crossing at the intersection 
of the westerly side of South Jefferson Road and the Marstown and Erie Railway Main Line on South Jefferson Road and further appropriating the sum of $30,000 from the unallocated portion of the Township's Capital Improvement Fund and all prior years for the financing of the improvement described in that ordinance. Ordinance 28-2017 amends and supplements section 255-7 entitled Rate Schedule under Chapter 255 of the Code of the Township entitled Road Service and Towing as it relates to towing and road service charges for calendar years 2018 and 2019. And finally, Ordinance Number 29-2017 is an ordinance of the Township Committee establishing a new Article 4 entitled College Internship Program under Chapter 61 of the Code of the Township entitled Salaries and Compensation Personnel Policies. Now, all these three ordinances will be taken as a consent agenda. They're being introduced tonight, November 20th. All three will be heard for public hearing and final passage at the Township Committee meeting on December 14th at 8.30 p.m. And at that time, any persons wishing to be heard concerning any of the three ordinances will be given the opportunity to speak. All three ordinances will be published in full in the daily record in accordance with law, including their notices of introduction, respectively. <clears throat> So at this time, uh, as a consent agenda on ordinance number 27-2017, ordinance number 28-2017, and ordinance number 29-2017, may we have a motion for introduction. So moved. Second. We have a motion and seconding. On roll call, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermoski. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. And Mr. Coppola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. So introduced for all three ordinances as a consent agenda. As we continue, ladies and gentlemen, now we have the resolutions as a consent agenda. We have items A, B, A, A B, C, D, E, and F. Are there any questions from members of the governing body concerning any of the resolutions? I think we want to pull out and vote individually on D. <clears throat> Okay, you interest, interested parties on D, so we'll, we'll formally pull that out and uh, bring it out. Okay, so now on the consent agenda, we're going to take resolutions A, B, C, E, and F. We have a motion for approval. So moved. We second. have a motion and second on roll call. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermoska. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Coppola. Well, although I was not in agreement with C, um, that's I being taken second. Separately. Oh no, D is, is separate. No, D is no C is. C is part of the consent agenda. Oh, C, C is. Oh, you're taking D out. I'm sorry. D is out. D well, is out. I was saying, although I was not in agreement with it, uh, serving alcohol at the Shoprite, because they have the attorney informed me that they've met all the uh, requirements and went over and above what we had asked for. Uh, I'll agree. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Okay. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Okay. So once again, the vote yeah. was on A, B, C, E, and F, and D is a separate vote. Mm. We have a motion so on, nice. we have a motion by Mr. Fermoska. We have a second on D for a vote. On D? On D. Uh, we have a second, then, I'll, then we'll read it. Okay. Okay. Okay, yep. so we have a motion by Mr. Fermoska, seconded by Mr. Francioli yep. on D. On roll call, Mr. Gallagher. Yes. Aye. Mr. Fermoska. Yes. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. That puts the motion on the floor, folks. You're going to discuss it in a second, all right? Um, all right, let me, why don't I read this? Because there, obviously, uh, it's, uh, there's a concern by our neighbors. Uh, on the ongoing uh, Barclays Bank application before the uh, planning board. And uh, as the shop right folks are, are all done now. Uh, this authorizes the mayor and the township clerk to extend a limited site improvement construction agreement uh, between U.S. Realty Estate Holdings uh, Number 2 Limited, known as Barclays Bank, and uh, the township regarding demolition of certain existing improvements 
clearance and grading of the property, tree removal, installation of all uh, building footings and foundations and installations of all underground utilities on the property located at 11 uh, at 115 uh, 120 South Jefferson Road in Whippany and designated as lot 12 and block 3601 as set forth on the tax map of the Township of Hanover, uh, which execution of the agreement is subject to preliminary and final planning board site plan approval and receipt of the cash and surety performance bond and any other instruments as described in the agreement. Uh, what this is is a, uh, a draft uh, of a, uh, a developer's agreement that would follow suit in the event that the Barclays Bank is approved by the planning board. Uh, this action uh, is taken in anticipation of any action by the planning board. Let me let me back up to some of the folks here who have followed this site and live along the site for quite some time. Uh, you were there with Bear Stearns, you were there when it was Chase, and uh, you were there when it was IT&T Rainier, as was I. And, uh, and now it seems to be going toward Barclays. Well, let's, let's first uh, understand one thing. Uh, yes, the Barclays Bank application is before your planning board right now. The final, if perhaps the final hearing, will be uh, tomorrow evening. Uh, by the planning board at uh, 7 o'clock uh, here. Uh, this property was purchased by Barclays Bank already. Uh, this property was purchased, it was in the Wall Street Journal some six to seven months ago, and uh, Barclays bought the entire site uh, from Vision Equities, who acquired it from Chase Bank. So they own all the buildings and the entire site. Uh, what's before us right now, not to go back over the planning board's uh, uh, approvals uh, is a matter of a um, elevated garage and other site improvements uh, on this particular uh, particular site. Uh, this agreement uh, is in preparation for any outcome of the planning board. Not to mix words, if the planning board denies this application, this agreement gets torn up. Uh, so why have this agreement? Right. In fairness to Barclays, the owners of the property. Uh, they uh, have asked the cooperation of the township uh, on moving forward in the, in, the, uh, in the anticipation that they are approved. Uh, they are looking at trying to get this property complete with major renovations by this July, uh, which is rather aggressive. Uh, if it's approved, uh, we compliment them and fine, we'll work along with them. If it's not approved, the agreement is null and void. Uh, Council, do you have anything that you can add to this? Right, Mayor. Th this is, uh, you know, the township has worked with other developments in the past. Uh, it's not to put up any structures, and it's just a preliminary type of an agreement. And again, as you said, Mayor, if there's no approval, then the agreement is not, does not have any effect. If there is an approval, this is the next step. Uh, going forward and as you mentioned there's a there's a time there's a timetable and it's better to uh, try to honor that timetable as opposed to having something stopped in mid in, in you know in mid construction uh, from that standpoint uh, but again it's just to uh, take care of uh, things you know on the ground not as far as construction is concerned thank you Fred um, what I'd like to do, gentlemen, is, is uh, I'd like to open the meeting yeah. for comments from our neighbors on this. So, so move. We have raffle applications to do first. Oh, you want to do raffle? Yeah, yeah, all right. Sure. Do Folks, bear with us. Administrator wants to do raffle applications. Okay, Fine. we have two raffle applications. Thirty seven. We'll have your tickets ready. And thirty seventy seven <laughs> for Elizabeth Ann Seton Council. Okay. I'll motion. We have a motion. Second. Okay, on roll call, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Farmaster. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. Abstain. Abstain. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. So approved with one abstention by Mr. Capola. And can do the open to the public. Okay, that, that's all right. All right, so at this point uh, in the uh, meeting, we're going to once again open to the public. So, gentlemen, a motion to so open. Moved. moved and seconded. Second. Thank all you. in favor. Aye. 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 All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the floor is open. If you'd like to address the Township Committee on um, this resolution or any other comment that you might have on tonight's meeting, you can do so from the podium, uh, giving us your name and address for the record. And if we can give you any other information relative to uh, this resolution, we'll be happy to talk about it. Mr. 
Berman Stitt, B U R M A N Stitt, S T I T T, 4040 Warren Street, Whippany, New Jersey. The D uh, goes really to the heart of what I wanted to talk about tonight. Uh, but let me ask another question on the timetable as I understand it. Uh, it was my impression that even after the planning board approves it, there's still yet another step, a formal requirement, or formal step, and that is a formal approval by you, the township committee. Is that correct? The, um, no, that is not. Okay. Uh, the, Bert, the way it would work is if the planning board does approve tomorrow, and they, they have other witnesses, as you and I know, mm -hmm. uh, then they would motion to memorialize that in a resolution of the planning board. Once they do that, then this developer's agreement would come into play. If they don't do that, this developer's agreement doesn't come into play. Okay, I, under, I understood the timing, but when does the memorialization take place? That can take place tomorrow night also? No, memorialization uh, is usually for 30, 30 days after. Uh, yes, it would be the next planning board would meeting. would be at the, the following planning board meeting. Okay, which is a week tomorrow, if I understand yeah. right. And that resolution, as you and I know, you've heard numerous resolutions of this nature, would encompass any and all of the stipulations that the planning board would put on the site, whatever came out of that last right. session. Right. And that, again, goes to my, my whole issue tonight. This project has moved along much quicker than I was led to believe by various people in the township I've talked to. I thought we were going to take our time with this, make sure we did it right. And yet, when I look at the timeline, if I have this correct, the planning board first heard from Barclays on September the 12th. Two days later, this committee put into authorization or memorialized the uh, increase in the height of the garage from 28 feet to 46 feet and other things. So two days later, three days after that, Barclays had its plans in here in the township. And yet nothing was approved by the, by the township committee. Mm -hmm. It's moved along much too quickly, I think. And in fact, I think there were comments to that in, in the board uh, meeting as I read the minutes on the 12th. <laughs> I'm concerned because, let me ask any of the committee men or all of you, what do you know about 40-foot or 46-foot parking garages? Do we, do we have one anywhere in the area within 15 miles? We do. We do. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me where it is? Uh, MetLife Corporation. That's not a 40-foot garage, is it, Ron? Yeah. I thought that was a 40 uh, it looks, I, I didn't go onto the side, well, I, I looked uh, at it from... I may be a liar for a foot or two, but I, I believe it's, same, I believe it's considered, we, the, the ordinance was modified, the, what, the change that you're referring to was a modification in the ordinance, so that we were consistent between the approvals we gave Bayer, MetLife, and now uh, any approval that we would give Barclay for the same height of garage. So, so you gave, at the time, you gave Barclay, uh, uh, MetLife, and uh, uh, Bayer, approval for 40 foot garages that's my understanding correct well well it was an ordinance that was All adopted right. we didn't give it All you right. know it's an ordinance to set the standard but yeah. from what I understand that ordinance was adopted uh, first mm -hmm. uh, for the, the met life site and now for Barclays but from the standpoint of the, the purpose of that was that so parking wouldn't become intrusive uh, mm -hmm. to the area uh, it was also to have less intensity development. Normally, developers don't want to, to incur the cost, uh, but from an aesthetic standpoint, it's actually, from, from my understanding, it's actually more favorable, uh, and it's a better use, a less intensive use, because you're just building up. Uh, so, so that was some of the basis from it. I mean, the township engineers here as well. If you want to add anything to that, Mr. Masera. Yeah, I think we heard from Blaze Branch out at the last meeting some of the justifications for that ordinance. Uh, uh, a good number of them were for environmental reasons, um, why a parking garage is preferred over the surface parking. Uh, let, me, let me address all of these points. Uh, was Blanche's uh, history uh, incorporated in the minutes that were just approved? If not, can we get a copy of, 
of that history. I haven't seen the minutes. All I heard was approval. Tonight. Oh, from the the minutes from the last meeting. Yeah. Uh, Blanchard. No, no, no. Brant, Blaze Branchow's. Uh, oh, Blaze Branchow. Well, however, I think the attorney is a copy of of of, of the record of Mr. Branchow and can read in to the record tonight uh, the information because he has exactly you know the copy of what Mr. Branchow had read mm -hmm. into the record. Uh, yeah, you know what it says is you know, you know from the, the township planner that um, private garages, accessory type uses to commercial properties have been permitted dating back to the 1956 zoning ordinance, and then in 1964, 1976, the maximum height of accessory buildings, including private garages, was the same as permitted for principal buildings, and then structures, parking structures appear in the 1985 zoning ordinance, which permitted parking structures only when they were part of planned industrial development or the IP zone districts. Uh, and again, they were permitted the same height uh, as the principal structure in 1988. The regulations were permitted for planned industrial units or development in the OBRL zone. Parking decks at that point were limited to a height of 28 feet in the OBRL zone, but the same ordinance permitted parking areas to be loaded, located 50 feet from residential zones. That's back in 1988. And then in 2002, the uh, zones were established, uh, the OBRL3 and OBRL zone, mm -hmm. uh, which increased the permitted height of parking decks in the zone from 28 to 46 feet. It wasn't until 2017 uh, when officials did meet with prospective suitors uh, for the Bear Stairs, Stearns J.P. Morgan site. Uh, the developer identified a discrepancy in the permitted height of parking decks between the OBRL3 zone and the OBRL zone. Uh, and that's, both zones are located on Whippany Road, correct? So, and they requested the same standard in both zones because there was a discrepancy between the two zones. So that was what was already permitted, the 46 feet was already permitted at the MetLife site and they asked for the same parking height, parking deck height with respect to uh, the site where Barclays is going to be. Uh, so the, it was the planning board and the township committee you know, reviewed the master plan and reviewed the aesthetics of the community and with input from the township planner, agreed uh, to make the amendment uh, to the zoning regulations uh, to permit the parking decks to be 46 foot high in both the same, in the RL zone and the RL3 zone. So it's in both zones. Uh, so I don't think, you, you know, and I don't want to speak in terms, I don't really think the township committee should speak in terms of the application. We don't know what's going to happen with the application. Uh, but, uh, you know, if there's an application that's, in a generic sense, conforming uh, to the zone and, and it meets the requirements and it's deemed complete, then it will be heard and approvals, a decision will be made. It doesn't mean anyone, nothing gets rushed. There's a record, there's a right of appeal, and it's a very diligent planning board. I've seen some matters take almost two years when there's issues of compliance and things of that nature. And uh, it's a very experienced planning board. So I, I don't, you know, certainly you're entitled to your opinion, but I, I think we, we should be careful to, to recognize that there's been a lot of due diligence when it comes to planning in the township and the master plan and the carefully crafted zoning ordinances. So, and there are volunteers on the planning board that are, are very diligent in what they do. Uh, so whatever decision they make is applying the zone and the, the application. This agreement tonight is only to uh, do what the township has done with other establishments such as ShopRite and Wegmans, and that is to make sure that any work that's done is monitored by the engineering department. There's oversight, there's an agreement, because what it also calls for is if they don't comply, the township engineer can shut them down. If they don't do what they're supposed to do, the township can call a bond. Uh, so it's not about 
you know, anything beyond that, but making sure there's oversight so that at the end of the day, the development, if it is approved, is compliant. I hope that helps a little bit with the history and an explanation. Maybe that will kind of shed some lights and some things for you. Council, for the record, I'm not here questioning how this township is run. It's run very well. I'm not even questioning any of the qualifications of the board members. I know a number of them personally. I not questioning that at all. Okay. I open it up with questioning the speed with this particular project is done and how much we know about 40 foot parking garages. Mm -hmm. uh, before I go back to that, though, let me comment on the use of aesthetics. Mm -hmm. There's a Supreme, Federal Supreme Court case on, if you will, how we judge things, and that goes to pornography. And I'm not suggesting this is pornographic, <laughs> but I am suggesting that aesthetics are also in the eye of the beholder. Understood. For the record. I'm concerned, even though we have a parking garage, do we know, in this case, it's roughly a 500 car parking garage in a concentrated area. Do we know what kinds of fumes are emitted from that garage within a certain distance. Well, do we uh, I want to uh, just try to help you though. Questions like that, that's what the planning board application is about. I, that's that's where there's public comment, you can question the applicant, you know, things of that nature. This isn't a this isn't within the jurisdiction of the governing body to address that. I, there's a zone. It's to build this if they so choose this parking garage. But the approval of that garage and it being compliant and asking any questions, uh, they, they have their own professionals. The township has its professionals. That's during the planning I, I, board process. I, I think, Fred, what Bert, mm -hmm. Bert is doing is he's making a statement. He's making a comment. Okay. In other words, he's, he's, I don't know that you're, you're asking for the township committee to uh, you know, respond to um, uh, a question that's either uh, an engineering-related question or something like that. I don't think we're qualified to do that. Um, but what we do know is that uh, they do plan to present additional uh, experts tomorrow, their experts tomorrow, both in architectural and en engineering areas. And I think that's, you and I know that's probably the, the right forum to ask that question, um, but uh, as, as it continues. I, I, I think, I think you're, you're, you're right, Ron. I'm, I plan to be there tomorrow night. It, this is more of a statement with, if you will, rhetorical questions. Yeah. This thing has moved so quickly, I wonder about whether this committee or the planning board, and we'll talk about to them tomorrow night, but we'll leave it as a rhetorical question right now. What does this committee know? Because it approved two days after the planning board submitted the suggestion to raise the height of the parking garage, it introduced an ordinance to do that. What do you five gentlemen know about the performance of 46 foot, 500 car parking garages. From an emissions standpoint, from a safety standpoint, from a noise standpoint, from a light standpoint, and we can go on and on and on. But my question, my, again, I go back to my original statement. I think this thing has moved much too quickly. We talk, we, I've had conversations with some people. I thought this thing was, was, was going to proceed apace. I don't think it has. I think this is, <coughs> The last, the only planning board meeting that we attended on this, there was more time spent on parking arrangements at an automobile dealership than there was mm. construction of this whole site so far. Which is a terrible so mess. I think I, I think which I is I a terrible mess anyway, but that's my comment. But go ahead. I think I've made my point. We have, we have moved much too fast <laughs> without a lot of knowledge. I'm concerned about where this is going to wind up as a result of that. Thank, Thank you. you, Bert. <clears throat> Joe DeKazer, 36 Warren Street. Previous meeting, I asked about wetlands, and I was told the EPA had approved it. Mm -hmm. Then I was told the EPA approved the original site, not what is going on now. And I'm, my question is... Are you suggesting that the wetlands delineation has changed? Uh, yes, I am. 
Jerry? It's very, very our, possible. Our, engin our engineer will have to speak to for engineers, but it is possible that the build. I don't understand how, when the original plan was developed, we had some wetlands back there. Yeah. The EPA approved it. Yeah. Now we're coming up with some new buildings, and nobody's suggesting that we go to the EPA again. And I don't understand that. We'll have. Well, let, let's ask the. It's a good question, uh, but uh, it would. I'm going to take the position that they're not, they're, they cannot encroach into any wetlands areas, and there's buffered areas to the wetlands. Correct, and they're, they're I want not. to see a they, wetland map then, when the engineers come then. Yeah. We'll see a wetland the, map, and there, we'll see where the buildings are going, there and is then an, we'll discuss whether it should go to the EPA. I have a call into the EPA now. Okay. They, they have submitted. Unfortunately, I they, know they're not going to get back to me tomorrow. But I think it's, I think if it, if it, called for the EPA approval the first time. I don't see any reason why it shouldn't be called for the second time. Thank Procedurally, Jerry, I don't know. What, 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 what they, goes they on? Have submitted when you sign a, off on that, what goes on? They have submitted a current uh, wetland delineation, and the work that they're doing does not disturb. When was the, the last time the wetlands delineation was updated? It's a current one. It's, it's, they're, they're valid for a period of five years. Okay. So it is current. So the so we would say that within the a five year the within the a five year window. I, I don't have I don't know the exact well, date. We have to know that, don't we? Uh, the the because wetlands delineation years, is in, has been submitted to the has been submitted to the planning board, which it is part of the record, um, and there is a current current uh, wetland delineation. You're sure of that? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. He. His, his license is at stake. <laughs> Does he have one? <laughs> now, now. Uh, the floor is still open. <clears throat> Hi. Uh, Gail Brzezinski. Speak right into that microphone. Pull it up. Yeah, there you go. 39 Warren Street. Um, I have a couple questions. Uh, first is, will there be any blasting when they're... I certainly hope not. Blasting well, your, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a good. We're not anticipating any. I mean, there's been plenty of construction done in Hanover Township. I don't recall there are any having to blast anything. There's, it's just not the uh, the type of geology we have here in Hanover Township. Okay. Well, I wouldn't know that, so that's why I asked. Um, also, um, is there any word if uh, Barclays? are uh, considering moving the location of the two garages where it would be a little less offensive to the residents? I think the, the, whether or not the lo has the planning board looked at the location of the garages? What are you suggesting that? Well, I uh, heard that there were some suggestions possibly to move the location to there somewhere was, less there offensive. Uh, on, uh, yes, there was. Okay. And uh, the um, Barclays people were contacted on the idea of giving consideration to moving the garage. And um, it's my understanding, and of course they'll comment to that. I can't comment to that. They'll comment on that tomorrow. Uh, but it's my understanding they did take it into consideration, uh, but they will have some answer for you at the planning board meeting. Okay. So we don't know if it would I be. personally okay. don't know. Uh, now, I, I know what the ordinance is for different zones and so forth. Uh, you patterned the Barclays proposal after what MetLife did uh, as far as the height of the parking garages. Uh, I'm pr pretty familiar with the location of the MetLife garage. It, it's not like totally surrounded by residences. So I can't see where that is a valid comparison when you're talking about putting parking garages so close to the homes and uh, I just don't see where it, it, it's a suitable comparison, and I question why and how fast that ordinance was changed. Um, the the ordinance did not uh, just for the purposes of clarification. The ordinance uh, modification, which was done at the time of master plan, was for height. The right. yard distances from the property lines were consistent. We're, we're always on the, on the books, I would think. We, that, the setbacks weren't changed on no that. Change. No, change. no, I'm talking about the height. The height? Yeah. Oh, well, the, the height was made consistent uh, on the books, as you just heard from council. 
uh, with both the MetLife and, and uh, the Bayer's applications for Right, parking. and both of those sites, don't they're not crowded with residences. So I'm having a hard time. No, right. Understanding that's uh, uh, fine by them. They're surrounded by Route 10 and, and a lot of land. I think I think your your concern and ours, okay, is the impact to you of this structure from a standpoint of sound, light, and uh, emission, etc. Uh, and I don't think we've changed our positions on that. Some of us sit on the planning board. Uh, we're certainly going to want to hear tomorrow night more testimony as to what they're going to do to assure us that the residential side of that building uh, emits no light and uh, I've yet to hear that so the we're, fumes we're, are more important than the light yeah well we'll we'll hear that tomorrow yeah okay. can, mayor can I just so uh, Ms. Brzezinski so that you know the way this works the governing body doesn't have any say over the actual application but you're right by going to the planning board meeting because that's where that's the way the law works that's where your question about the location uh, you know any concerns you have you know for the neighborhood things of that nature that's where you have an opportunity to ask questions directly to the applicant and then the board can try to work with your concerns and address that in the approval process if there there are concerns they can manage to the governing body you're as the mayor's opened up the meeting and the governing body wants to hear the concerns you have they're limited in what they could ever do it's the planning board at this point in the decision making process and yet the planning board has a certain set of rules they have to comply with but that's where those type of concerns are very relevant to raise I don't want there's not much this governing body can do by the law especially the applications pending so that you're aware you're, you're right to want to attend the meeting and express any concerns thank you, you. and uh, I apologize for those of you that will be there tomorrow because I will be repeating <laughs> also um, I was looking at a couple of uh, things that have gone in on in the history of the town um, maybe this isn't appropriate but I still have four minutes uh, anyway uh, a few years ago flavors and fragrances company wanted to relocate to the American Road area in Cedar Knolls um, due to the concern about the possibility of toxic fumes they were opposed by residents I think a couple of you guys even live there uh, due to the opposition flavors and fragrances decided to move elsewhere um, what I'm wondering is why wasn't the same standard applied in the case of the Barclays 46 foot parking garages they're gonna hold hundreds of cars emitting toxic fumes and it's near uh, Two neighborhoods and also a, a grammar school um, I, I, th I think what you're talking about is a corporation named man m-a-n-e okay. uh, French corporation uh, they did uh, the uh, research and development and manufacture of fragrances and right. flavors, uh, flavors. Aromas. In Borough, Morris Plains. Would, would you? flavors and fragrances. Fla flavors and fragrances yeah yes. uh, and uh, uh, I will tell you uh, on that application that at one point Hanover Township was looking at that particular French company but not at the zone that it went when you heard about it and we heard about it it was going into Morris uh, Plains uh, and it was uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that that use was probably within a uh, hundred yards of a residential home or residential neighborhood not unlike yours but this was a firm Let, let's let's be clear this was a firm whose product was the manufacturer of fragrances and aromas etc so our concerns and the neighbors concerns up there were that they would have ventilation systems they would have air handlers etc that would emit these odors uh, perfume like odors into the air uh, we went to re we took our research as far as going to see their facility uh, down toward I think down toward the Corny area, uh, Wayne. Or, Wayne. 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 Wayne, in Wayne, yeah, in Wayne. So, uh, but that that was a manufacturing facility, and uh, you know, very unique. Unlike Bark Barclays is a uh, uh, Barclays is a back office, a bank. 
it's it's uh, it's credit cards, it's banking, it's of that nature. It's like Chase when they were in there, very no, quiet, I very it's quiet. I will tell you that um, uh, if they get into this facility and operate this facility, um, they're not too pleased about anybody knowing where they are. Uh, oh, they will have. They're going to know where they are. They they will have <laughs> they will have what's known uh, in European security as M5 security. That's ultimately the highest. Uh, so they're, they're not out to uh, uh, advertise in the weekly regional and, uh, you know, uh, spread, the, spread the word that they're there. Yeah. Oh, the word will get out. But nonetheless, it, it's not so much as what they do. It's the, the toxic fumes that will come from a parking garage or two very large parking garages. So you, you could do apples and oranges and all of that with perfume aromas. Maybe they're not even toxic. But I know that car fumes are toxic. So that's why I'm so concerned with that. And the other thing is, I mean, would any of you guys want two 46-foot garages like out your front window? I mean, it, it's aesthetically just wrong. You know, <laughs> trees are not, they're, they're blaring in our face. The buildings are bad enough right now. And, uh, you know, I, I thank you for your time, but you know, we're really concerned about this. And I'll reiterate tomorrow. And please, I was going to say, please bring your comments forward to them tomorrow. And, uh, you know, they'll, they'll have to explain themselves before you and the planning board. And, uh, again, the outcome of tomorrow night's meeting may have um, um, different um, requirements from the planning board's point of view on landscape, on lighting, on uh, all of these areas that we're concerned with noise security etc I, uh, I I assure you that Chairman Pinadella does a rather uh, effective job on getting answers to these now one of the other things that you heard at the last meeting and I will say it again and that is that planning board uses a process of uh, examining property after it's built okay yes. what does that mean that means that if uh, if they get their approval and uh, abide by their developer's agreement, it's all done, and there's some issues, whether it's fix. light, sound, et cetera, uh, the planning board's going to go back on the site. Okay. And then the builder has to agree, the developer has to agree uh, to comply with whatever the remedies are. So there's always that option, too. But I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not thinking that far ahead. Uh, let's, let's see what tomorrow brings. Okay. Thank yeah, you very there's much. There's also another point of difference that I think just so everybody's aware of. With the main application, that was in the Borough of Mars Plains, and the applicant was filing suit against 275 residents. A suit was being filed against mm -hmm. 275 residents who lived, some in Cedar Knolls, some in Mars Plains, to remove something called a deed restriction that these people had in the deed, which goes back to the 1950s. Uh, that restriction. So that's what started that whole process. I'm just, just worried there could be some lawsuits as such for, for this. Yeah, I well. think, though, any approval, if there were to be an approval, is subject to mm -hmm. certain actions and standards. So <clears throat> the planning board, I encourage you to come out. Oh, I'll be there. I hope that you express your ideas, your thoughts, because we live here. Right. We care what goes on. To our neighbors, our friends, and we do if not want to. This goes through. See I'm moving next to you guys. <laughs> I, I look down on the site every morning. I look down on the site every morning. I could see the lighting from where I am. I appreciate yeah. your time. Yeah. Thank you. Everybody. One, one time. One per person. No. Double. Yep. First, make sure everybody else. Everybody Joe DeKaiser, 36. Se second time up. Second time up. That's it. Everybody one more question. Okay. About the EPA oh. is there, again. Is there a, wait, wait, before you begin. Is there anyone else that, yeah. that hasn't been heard that would like to be heard at this time before this gentleman speaks again? Okay. No? That's okay. Oh, this, this young lady. Would you give up the floor to this young lady right over here? I certainly would. Sure, yeah. that's all right. And then, then, we'll, then, we'll, then, we'll let you, then we'll let you comment again. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, uh, ma'am. I'm Pam Petrello, and I live at 50 Fieldstone Drive. Um, I just wanted to point out that at the last meet, planning board meeting that we were at, um, they had some photographs of lots of trees, and they were talking about evergreen trees and how it hides all these buildings. And I just want to say that that's not the case and that um, I've taken some photographs. I hope I'll be able to share them tomorrow night. 
Sure. Okay. <clears throat> because from my house, which is directly across the street from the building where the parking garage is going to be, I have a clear view of the building. There's still tree leaves on the trees, so it's not, you know, in the winter, it's, you know, they're on my front lawn, you yeah. know. And my concern is there are more, it's going to be closer, and there's gonna, it's going to be higher, and there's going to be more lights. And I have to think, you know, if I want to move well, and get we out of here. That, we, don't, we don't agree that there's going to be more light, but that's to be continued. But okay. Go ahead. <laughs> well, well, well I, I say that in the sense that if there's going to be more light, I don't think the planning board, I can't speak for all the members. If there's going to be light emission from this thing, mm -hmm. there's going to be an issue with okay. the planning board members. But go ahead. I just, I don't, you know, but if they're already working on this because we can see that there's construction stuff and we're starting to hear noise already. So it's almost like it's happening. It's pretty frightening to me. It really is. I have to worry about my property values. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm getting older. I'm not going to stay in a colonial for long. And am I going to be able to sell my house? You know, do I have to sell it in the summer? Do I have to tell people what it looks like, you know, from November through May? You know. No, well understood. Um, <clears throat> At the last planning board meeting, when we came up to speak, we had to have a question, and comments weren't welcome. Is that going to be the case tomorrow That's a night? Pro it, yeah. it, there's a process that the planning board follows. Okay. And what happens is the applicant comes in, they'll sit here, they bring up a witness, and the witness speaks about tomorrow night the architect is going to come in, mm. and he's going to speak, and he's an expert in that area. When that architect's done speaking, you have every right to ask any question you want about mm -hmm. his testimony and to ask him specifically about line of sight issues, to ask him about lighting issues, whatever you want to ask. But they have to be questions from a procedural standpoint. After they present their case and they're done with their architect and they're done with their traffic engineer who's going to provide you with traffic counts and the impacts to traffic, when they're done and they've, they've completed the presentation of their case, and when the members of the public, our residents, are done asking their questions, at that time, the board is open to commentary State statements. statements. So you can say, I think this, I think this, I think that. You, you, you have every right to do that, but okay. there's a process. So okay. I would just ask you, to, to follow that process and you'll have an opportunity to, to voice either a question or to voice a, a statement. Okay, thank you. Um, and then I just, about the garages, I just don't understand, you know, why they couldn't be put, like Jefferson Road is commercial from one end to the other. Why can't these buildings be put on that side? Or why can't they be put, you know, I just feel like they want to keep it real pretty all around, you know, so people driving, and then, okay, let's just throw it in the back there where nobody, you know, where the residents are. Like, who cares, you know? It's just, it just feels like it's not being a good neighbor to me, you know? They couldn't really possibly think that people would be happy about this. Uh, I, I wish we could answer your question for you. If that, that's a question for their architects or engineers. That's a question for Barclays. Okay. They will have principals here from the company, sure. okay. so you'll be able to talk to them. And as uh, John said, as John's also your director of uh, planning, and uh, there will be a process where you can address every witness that comments that night. You can ask questions, relevant questions to that testimony. After that's done, and the planning board is before they vote, before they vote, they will open the floor to comments and statements, and that's when every neighbor will have an opportunity to state their, their position on it. And uh, uh, afterward, then, they'll either approve or deny, and then they'll memorialize it in a resolution. Okay, and if I'm to bring pictures, which I'm planning on doing, when would I present those? You can, you can present the, them tomorrow night. But at the comment, like when we can comment, or? In either, in either okay. yeah, parts. Okay. Um, the last thing is just the, the noise. Like, I know that they, they're going to have some outside activities. Um, you know, we have activities in the cemetery. I'm on the Landmark Commission. When you're outside, you can't hear somebody 15 feet from you. I know that we're, like, on Route 10. But 
I just can't imagine that they're not going to have microphones and and there's going to be all kinds of like party noise coming did, out of there. Um, again, I don't want to hear hear or present their case, mm -hmm. but I do remember because I have my notes. When there will be no um, audible enhancements to any kind of discussions. Oh, they were outdoor. talking about their outdoor that there's an area that's a depression. Okay. They gave it a fancy description. They called it an amphitheater. It's a depression in right. the soil that allows them to put three rows of seats in. But there's and two he did, areas. He did say, he did say specifically, because we asked him the question, would there be any amplifiers, would there be any speakers used? And he did say no. So as a result of that, if this thing were to get approved, there's a condition that would be part of a motion, and part of the motion would be to prohibit any outside amplification of sound. That would be a condition of it. Okay. I, I mean, I did hear point. that, but I, I just... No, I just want to clarify. Yeah, yeah no, it, that, that question, is, as John said, that question did come up. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, I think I asked that question, and uh, it was that they weren't going to have any amplified sound. Now, the other condition that the planning board could put on is the use of that theater. So mm -hmm. in other words, um, uh, if, uh, if it's during the normal business hours, and I don't care if they run 24-7, but if it's normal business hours, and we'll determine them to be, let's say, um, you know, 8 to 5 or 9 to 5, that they can use the theater in those, that period of time, but not beyond. So, and, and again, there'll be no amplification systems as well, from what we understand. And then as far as the construction goes, because I, I think that that's going to go, usually construction goes on longer than, you know, whatever they say it's going to be up front. Um, I don't know what the rules are as far as the time that they can start and finish. Okay. Mr. Macera, who is head of our engineering department in town, can advise us. Yeah, that's part of that developer's agreement that the mayor talked about, certain rules that they have to follow, mm -hmm. and they would have to follow the... Um, those hours and they're seven to seven. Okay. Seven a.m. to seven. Seven a.m. to seven p.m. Seven and then if they yeah. don't, oh. what about Sundays? What do we do? We, do no, we call the police? No work on Sundays. No work on holidays. Yes. Okay. You yeah. call the police. Yeah. Call the police. The yes. police. Call the police. Have enforcement. Yep. Okay. What about like their snow plowing? The snow plowing. Snow plowing. They do it like it, it, we you hear this. Horrible scraping, beep, beep, beep. It goes on for hours, hours, early in the morning. I know they have to clear their lot, yeah, but. I don't know what to say. You know, that's when it falls. That's, Is that presently that's going? I mean, you're hearing that presently? I, not, I mean, it hasn't snowed, but I mean, in the past years, yeah. when, it, when there's. Oh, an automobile, yeah. an automobile uh, alarm system going off? Is that what you. No, no, the trucks beep. Yeah. After oh, backup signals from a vehicle, after yeah. they're done, sanitation, snow, no snow plows. After oh. they're done with the presentations, and you're done asking questions, before there's a vote, you can make your comments. And one of the comments could be, "Would you please be a considerate neighbor and do this, this, or that?" That's a fair thing well, that you one can of, do. One of, the things they, one of the things they did agree to, I can tell you right now, because it's on the record, we were having some trouble from the neighbors hearing they're picking up uh, uh, refuse in the middle That's of the me. night. That was me. Okay. Three o'clock in the morning, well, Sunday we, night. We, then if you heard one of the conditions, yes. that stops, period. Yes. Okay. That we gave them hours in which they, they would be able to operate in, and uh, they're not going to operate after hours period that's that's a that's horrible i mean it was horrendous you shouldn't you shouldn't, well, you shouldn't be to, subjected it was to horrendous that. Tolerate that. That's the, you agree i almost am so sad that we didn't learn about that earlier we would have taken i know i should have chase. come i should have yeah. come because it, you know you know i would wake up and and i'm not the only one yeah <laughs> but these are these are all of the conditions that ultimately will go into their developers agreement if they're approved They'll have to live by it. They don't live by it. Well, then we have other ways of dealing with it. We have property maintenance, and we have other ways of finding them, and we have the police department. We have one particular facility in here that we, we would get complaints, whether they're valid or not, about noise and, and music, et cetera. And uh, we have our police department is equipped to do noise evaluations, noise metering, and noise studies. We send them out there. Just and we get a report back that says, you know what, there's a basis for this or there isn't. Just a point of clarification. We yeah. do have on the township committee a member who's an expert in regard to snow plowing. 
and I think he might be able to tell us what, what we could ask, <laughs> what we could ask them to do. No, the one thing I just said to uh, John is that I plow at uh, Fairleigh Dickinson University for mm -hmm. 15 years with Davy Tree Company, and we have a huge fleet that plows. Sometimes I think we've done 27 straight hours, and none of the vehicles have that backup device on them. That might be something you could bring up because you're in reverse and, and drive so many thousands of times. God, you're crazy. I think that would be reasonable to, to say, hey, in the event of a snowstorm, uh, do you have to use the backup devices? Because I've never been on a job where they did use them, and it's right here in New Jersey. It's at a college where safety is paramount. So I would say that would be a good question because it has been addressed in other towns, I'm sure, because the only time we've typically seen it is in supermarkets when they're open for business during the day mm. because people are walking by and going from their park car to the store. So just to add my two cents, I think that might be a, bring, a good thing to bring up tomorrow night also. Okay. Yeah. Br bring all these questions forward, please. Okay, I will. Absolutely. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, once again, floor is that you actually have another crack at it. Go ahead. One, one quick one. The EPA approval that has a five-year okay, right? Yes, sir. That's based on the original buildings. Now there's new buildings. Yes, sir. Don't you think well, we need a new EPA approval? Well, think about it. these new parking garages are being built in the parking lot. There's no wetlands in the parking lot on the pavement. You, but the work they're doing does not encroach into the areas of jurisdiction by the DEP. I, I, I just can't say it any clearer. It does so not, we, it does not had, disturb any of the wetlands we or wetlands buffers. Wetlands. Do we still have that map of wetlands? Engineer would yes, have Yes, we do. So yeah, can we you, bring that to the meeting? Next they have them in the meeting. It's part of their package. And, sir, you... And we'll show the wetlands yes, and sir. we'll show where the buildings are going. Yes, but, sir. But, sir, 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 that's what I wanted to know. You, you have the right to go down to the planning office and ask to take a look at those that, that plan tomorrow yeah, before the meeting. Okay. Floor remains open. Mine, mine is, excuse me, Berman Stead again. Mine is a procedural question, and Ron, you and I talked about this briefly. And, and uh, uh, it is possible that Barclays could vacate this site someday. We hope for their sake that it's not the way Bear Stearns vacated the site. But my concern with large parking garages, as opposed to buildings that can be very easily secured, is that we wind up with zombie buildings and what that means from a safety standpoint. So the procedural question is to talk to this committee or to talk about the planning board, and I'd like to hear some direction, about the township, whoever's authority, creating an uh, creating a written understanding or agreement uh, or directive that if that site is vacated for X period of time, whatever it is, or if a future owner does not want those garages, those garages are deconstructed at somebody's expense other than the townships. Now, the question is, we don't have to talk about any, my question to you right now is, is, is it this body's obligation to do that or does that start with the planning board it's planning board it's, it's a planning board board. matter and, and uh in, in similar and not speaking to parking garages but in similar areas where we need guarantees for the future um we've uh such as landfilled areas or so forth where we where we think there's a, additional risk we, we've held fred we've held performance bonds or held bonds right right for an example or, or we or we make them provide Assure, insurances, you know, in, in certain cases. Right. And I I'm not saying a parking garage fits the criteria for that. No, but I think also Mayor and Mr. Giorgio can correct me, but I think we also have a ordinance regarding buildings that are vacant, vacant. abandoned, correct, Joe? So, you know, that's just another mechanism as well. Bert, I think you could also ask them the question of will you advance public safety by putting cameras in your parking garage? Oh, they, they, they do intend. You, you can, they do you can ask them yeah. that question. Okay. Yeah. 
You know, the but safety they, is paramount. They they will have a very sophisticated security system. I heard. But I while they while they're occupying the building. I think I heard M5 from Iran. Yeah. And I'm, and yes, we'll you back, did. We'll come back to that tomorrow night. Mine was simply a procedural question to make sure that this township can deconstruct those garages under certain circumstances at somebody else other's expense than the township's expense. Because if we got those standing vacant for a couple of years, we've got two-legged and four-legged creatures starting to inhabit them. I'm, I'm less concerned about the four-legged creatures than I am the two-legged creatures for the record. I, I, I do, uh, I can share with you uh, on the lighting aspect that are which which we exchange with the Barclays folks uh, our very big concern over lighting spill from the area aside from what I anticipate or what we expect to see tomorrow night in the way they intend to shield it I was also told by their COO their operating officer that in any event and they would have a dimming system after a certain hour, be it, I don't know, let's say 7 in the evening, 8 in the evening, and all lights in the garage would be dim. Now, one of the other requirements that you're going to hear out of probably John or I is that all lights within the complex of the garage are shielded, meaning that they're recessed in. They don't, not, no bulb would, would come out. But that's still not going to satisfy the fact that we're going to look for guarantees that no light spills toward the residential areas at all. So if you're looking at it, so if, if I were to look at something redeeming from the light standpoint, I, I would say that in the evening hours, uh, this structure uh, would block any light coming from the office complex itself. But uh, again, we'd have, to, we'd have to hear this and see this tomorrow night. There's, there's not too many redeeming features about a parking garage. So we, we took, but my concern, Council, back to your comment on, on, on uh, an ordinance or whatever we call it on what I'm going to call zombie facilities. Is that a blanket one or does one have to be written for this particular? No, it's, uh, it's blanket for any facility. It would okay. be applied to any, any facility. Is, is there any way that... I can get a copy of that if I come down to the town hall. Somebody can provide that, Joe or somebody. I, Joe, I have to check have? the code to see if we have that. Bert. Yeah, I think yeah, I think okay. Bert, you're bringing up a good recommendation to move forward with, but I don't think that exists today. Uh, I thought council said it exists. No, I, council, no. I thought we had I, we, we had when buildings were abandoned for maintenance uh, and things of that nature, Joe. If there's anything that would be in the property yeah. maintenance code, right. which would have to maintenance be reserved. But I can, so I'm not but, definite, Bert. But what I could do is I can, I can look for with the administrator, and if we don't have it, Mayor, I would ask if we could, we could discuss it at a future meeting. Introduce well, there have to be language to say yeah. how the building would be secured. Okay. Is what you say. Okay. Okay. It's a short week, Joe, but if you can produce it in the next week or so, before even if you can do it before the holiday, I give me a call. You've got my number. Bert, if we have it, you'll get it. Okay, and if you don't have it, you'll tell you me. Don't have it, too. I'll let you know. Thank you. Then I'll get it. <laughs> the floor is still open. <coughs> Seeing none. Ooh, Hearing none. Close. Motion to close. Motion to close. <coughs> okay. Second. All right, gentlemen. Thank you, folks. Uh, again, I appreciate uh, all of what we've heard tonight. Uh, I think it was a very relevant discussion. Um, again, um, critically important that you bring your comments tomorrow night to the to the board that's going to take action on this. Okay. Uh, at this time, uh, Committeeman Gallagher, any comment? Yeah, I do. First of all, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Ah, you too. Very good. And you know what we'll do together after January 1st at the reorg, we'll all discuss our uh, getting back in our fitness program so we can be lean and mean by the springtime, but the season of eating is going to begin. <laughs> are, you, are you suggesting that I'm out of shape? <laughs> uh, the, the, the other thing I want to say, too, is um, just on the DPW, is uh, we never discuss... Um, specs and specifics on tonnage because we know sometimes it can get long-winded but these guys are out a lot and uh, I have the monthly report from October and they collected 423,000 tons of sanitation 75 yards of brush and 3,640 yards of leaves 
They do the entire town 22 times with the leave vax. Jim Herbert, a great friend of all of ours, told me the other day, as soon as he puts him out there, the men are out there vacuuming him up. I had to get him out there while the truck was coming up the street. <laughs> so you know what? It, it, besides many, many other things, these guys are doing an incredible job. And I can't get into specifics, but we had a problem with our equipment last Saturday and Sunday. And it could have been a big problem with our equipment. And uh, all hands were on deck. The way these guys came together and worked, the teamwork, the skills, the equipment, it was fantastic. So, you know what? I know it's my detail as a committeeman, and I love, I love having this, being part of, you know, of um, working with these guys. But I get to see what they do every day. And like I always say, Hanover Township doesn't look the way it does by accident. So mm -hmm. these guys are great. And Brian, thank you very much. The last part about these guys is we did get a new street sweeper, and two of our men, Brian Ferran and Brian DePrimo, went down to Waco, Texas to get trained on it. So you're going to start to see that piece of equipment around town, and it's going to make everything look a lot better. We do sweep a lot, and with a brand new street sweeper, it's going to look even better. Mm -hmm. The last thing I want to report is our Substance Awareness Council and our Mars Area Coalition for Education and Positive Choices. We have our big... Friday nights at Men and Arena starting on January 5th and going straight until March 9th. But what we're also implementing with this coalition this year is something that Chief Roddy and I discussed with Chief Canizzo from East Hanover at a meeting seven or eight months ago. We're, we were going to introduce a concept on how to get our middle school kids to be introduced to weight training and weight training correctly, proper nutrition techniques, and even gym etiquette. So. Each town in our coalition is almost like a franchise. So in Hanover Township, we're going to have a training with Hanover Township PD. We're going to be at Retro Fitness the second, two, the second, the third and fourth Saturday in January. And we're going to have 12 people, middle school kids in a pilot program, train with officers from our Hanover Township Police Department. Positive role models, good examples, healthy activity, and hopefully they can take something out of that and make it their own. The second two Saturdays in February are going to be training with our fire departments. I reached out to both fire chiefs and we're going to have men, young men or women come down, again, train, teach our youngsters how to lift weights, the proper techniques, why you do it, why this is important, everything from breathing to nutrition and hopefully again, positive role models. And with the fire department or something slightly different. We have a real problem with having people join and enroll. And if they want to go down and train with our firefighters and all our first responders, they might be more likely to become junior firefighters in training, which would be good for everybody, all of us residents. So we have a lot of work to do. We're going to be busy. And uh, that's just a couple updates, Ron. Thank you. Thank you. Very good, Ace. Thank you very much. Very good. John. Yeah, under the uh, banner of great things happening in Hanover, uh, first one I'm happy to report about is a grant. Special grant from the county open space uh, for Bee Meadow Park. Bee Meadow Park is a pristine facility. It's one of the great wonders within Hanover Township. We just received the $72,000 grant to put in a nature trail. Um, so that's something that our residents can look forward to. I think it's going to go over very, very well. Secondly, um, Wall Street Journal, last weekend's edition, front page article, <laughs> article entitled, Activate Control Unit, Opening Wegmans. Uh, Hanover's Wegmans received special highlights in this Wall Street Journal article, Shop which was a front page, yeah. um, <laughs> reportingly that there were over 2,000 shoppers in line awaiting for that store to be open that Sunday morning in late July. So it's a good article, it's good buzz for Hanover Township, and we're happy that um, they are here and doing well within our township. Next point is an update on North Jefferson Road. It's like good news and bad news. The good news is the concrete work is done, almost done. Um, that should be done probably within five days or so. The bad news is the paving process looks like it's going to be delayed. It's still our priority. It'll be our number one priority to complete uh, North Jefferson Road. But stay tuned. We beg you for your patience with this. But it may be delayed until 2018. Mayor, that concludes my re John. remarks. What John failed to tell you was that this grant that we got for the continuation of the trail, some of you in the room might remember 
the trails is Patriot's Path. A gentleman by the name of Al Kent from Morris County was the start of that, which is going to join all of our townships together with these paths, and it's happening. Uh, but up until last year, there was never money through the Morris County Open Space Farmland Preservation Fund for trails. Here they had a program, but they didn't have any grants to fund it. So John and Hanover took the lead, and we had a public question uh, put up on that. It passed, so now the freeholders had the very grant monies that Hanover got the benefit of, the 72000 So, attaboy. Well, very good. George. Yes, a uh, few things, uh, Mayor. First of all, uh, Sunday on the 11-26th, there's going to be an egg and pancake breakfast over at the American Legion, sponsored by the uh, Ladies Auxiliary to raise money for veterans. It goes from 8 o'clock in the morning to, tw to 12 noon, $8 for adults, $5 for children, anyone below that age is for free. On Saturday, uh, December 2nd, over at OLM, there's going to be a parishioner's Christmas party for all of the kids and parents from OLM, Notre Dame, and anyone thinking about becoming part of the parish. It's really a great event. Um, they serve nine different entrees. They have Santa Claus, Mrs. Santa Claus, a magician act, and it's all for free. All you have to do is bring in the dessert. Cultural Art just recently had their flute ensemble this past uh, Sunday. I was told by the chairman that there was around 70 people above plus attending. It was really a very nice event. On December 10th, OLM concert, $15 per person is for the Hanover Wind Symphony. They always have a nice event, and that too starts at 3 o'clock. This past Saturday, uh, there was coffee with the cops over at Wegmans. Uh, pretty well attended. It was a very nice day. Wegman sponsored it. Um, they're actually going to do more of them. The next one is going to be in Pine Plaza, a date to be uh, noted uh, at Pine Plaza uh, where, they, where they sell that ice cream on that corner, that little corner store. I think Committee in Gallagher knows the name. Of, I'm not Planet Swirl. Maxwell, right. Planet so, Swirl. Planet yeah. Swirl, Planet. right. So they're going to have it at that location the next time they have it. One thing I wanted to note was the chairman of uh, Substance Awareness, along with the Committeeman Gallagher and Chief Roddy, and I'm sure other, other members of the Substance Awareness, put together a great program a couple uh, weeks ago on um, pedophiles and child abduction. They really did a lot. They had a guest, a person coming in who really was extremely knowledgeable about it. And it was three hours long. I got to catch the last hour or so due to a prior meeting. But it was, it was unfortunate. There was only, you know, maybe 35 people in attendance. But I would love for Committee and Gallagher to again have the, the speak with the folks and substance awareness and, and do it and really get out a good crowd. Facebook, from what I understood, is very dangerous. The stuff that goes on here about people, their kids, birthdays, any kind of an event, which kind of lets a, gives a lot of information to anyone that's in that particular mode. And I was really shocked when Dr. Phil interviewed an individual who was in jail who performed over a hundred of these kind of uh, events and what he said as to how he gets by doing what he does was incredible. So I'm hoping that we can do it again for the future so that more and more people can get to understand what that's Are you looking at are you looking at Terry's D? I don't know what no I just saw it. Says you know George Terry, what do you got? <laughs> you know George the one thing I want to say and uh, What is the I, D about? What? Was it voted on? Oh. What? The, we didn't Straight vote on D. She, 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 the resolution. The we didn't do a separate vote. Yeah. Right, at the end of the comments. Oh. At the end of the comments. Yeah, at the end of the comment period. Yeah. Just real, it, just real quick on what Committeeman Coppola said, and uh, you know what, George, thanks for being here and helping us promote it too, but there's one statistic 
that, that the whole thing was troubling, and I announced it was going to be troubling, but 2,100 children in the United States are missing every day. Every day. The target age for girls is 14 to 17. The target age for boys is 8 to 10. And the sad thing is, is the gentleman that hosted it said when people don't come and show up, unfortunately they have a false sense of security, and they think it can't happen here, it can't happen to my kid. So we did speak to him, and we are going to do it again. We're going to try to, but the problem is it's for adults, not the children. But thank you, George. Just wanted to throw that stat for you. It was really, truly an eye-opener. And, you Which know, when, when people That's put it. all this information about their kids and their family on Facebook, you have no idea the harm you're doing. And like, Mr. like Committee Man Gallagher said, if we get the impression over in Hanover, it doesn't happen. Well, it can. Okay, and with that, I really would like to wish everyone a very happy and blessed Thanksgiving. Okay, thank you. Finish with Bob, and then we'll come back. Mm -hmm. Robert, yeah, make it quick. We took a lot of time in the beginning of the meeting with the uh, recognition of the football team. Again, they'll be playing up in Sparta at Pope John High School on December first. We don't know the time yet, but we will do a send off from the uh, rec center. Wish them luck. Um, Santa Claus coming to town on December second at the rec center. Busy day because he's going to be over at the. Uh, OLM Community Center in the evening. Uh, if you can't get there in the evening or if you want to see him twice, uh, between 2 and 4 at the rec center, they'll have snacks and face painting and all stuff for the children and grandchildren. Um, also, at that time, you can drop off a letter to Santa. All letters that are received by December 15th will be responded to personally, individually. Um, so we got a direct line to Santa Claus. Um, and then last, certainly uh, not least, happy Thanksgiving and a safe Thanksgiving to everybody. But it looks like the weather's going to be good, so please enjoy. And as uh, Committeeman Gallagher said, let's try not to eat too much. Thanks, Robert. Okay, apparently on D, we took a motion. We had a second, but then unfortunately we got cut off by comment. So thank you for reminding us for that vote. So we have the motion and we have a second. Offered it. Mm. Uh, on roll call, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermoska. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Coppola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Joe. Okay. All right. Um, gentlemen, I think we, we covered a lot of ground tonight. The, uh, I did want to mention, uh, and I think I did at another meeting, that uh, our thanks once again to Barbara Davis and the uh, Morris County Open uh, Space uh, Farmland and Preservation Trust for the grant on our post office because now we'll be able to move forward with the acquisition of the Whippany Post Office. Uh, our intention for that is to remove it, turn that into a pocket park, and clean that whole area up down there. So that's going to be great. Uh, we finally get that done. Uh, December 1st, uh, the Economic Development Advisory Committee of uh, Hanover, a very active group. We'll be running another, John, what is it, a, uh, is it a uh, networking? It's a special networking special event networking for businesses at in Hanover Township. And uh, believe it or not, uh, it's being hosted at uh, Wegmans uh, right here. So uh, it was very, very good of them to offer up uh, some uh, room for us to have it right on their facility. And they're, they're a wonderful case history of what we can do in Hanover. So, so on that note, I join with everyone here in wishing you all a very, very happy Thanksgiving. Uh, please get together with your family, relatives, etc. Uh, enjoy the day together uh, and be thankful for what we all have here in Hanover Township and, and around the world. Uh, on that note, a motion for adjourn. So moved. All Aye. in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Adjourn. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. See you tomorrow night. Gary, I haven't seen you yet. I know. A long, long time. How are you doing? Pretty well, Gary. Okay.